So the next session will be um, the um, our friends from the um, Interlab and the, not in the Interlab is the um, okay outdated information is our friends from South Korea and the Moon will be introduce um, introduce us about the situation that the South Korea is going through under the AI situation and the citizen data. And the, the fun facts, the Taiwanese government and recently is also trying to like um, bring more and more like citizens' personal data into um, some of the, um, you can call it misuse on my own humble opinion. And while we still like figuring out how to showing the presentation deck, I will like keep sharing some of the interesting information. Okay, so there we go. Uh, we can talk about the how government using citizens personal data after this short um, after our question and answer session. So um, let's um, welcome Moon with a short round of applause. Hello everyone, I'm Moon. I'm going to talk about the use of citizen data by South Korean government through the AI and other technologies. And what can civic society do? I hope this presentation will be a good introduction of South Korean policy and some cases in Korea that may raise some privacy concerns. Before start the session, is there anyone who visited Korea between 2010 and 2021? If so, this talk may be related to your personal information or so. In 2021, a journal and some CSO and the member of National Embassy, Park Jumin, revealed the Korean South Korean Ministry of Justice has provided more than 170 million photos of foreign and nationals who travel through the country's airport to more than 10 facial recognition companies without their consent. CSOs claim this act is illegal because the facial data is sensitive data that can be used for identifying someone and CSO find that found that the reason they why they gave them gave the companies the data from the is it was because the AI facial recognition company needed a lot of data, but the data collection was is really expensive and takes a lot of time. So government has a lot of data, so they wanted to boost up the AI industry. So they just gave it to the private companies. Ministry of Justice claimed that the actual data modeling is happened in isolated lab, so the data never been exported to outside. Actually, they didn't, they, as they claim, they didn't export any data from their lab, and only the, day, only the thing that they can export is algorithms, but even the algorithm wasn't exported. Uh, and the, fortunately, like, over like only months ago, the South Korean government recently announced that it won't be, they aren't gonna do any facial recognition protect, project until it has a legal basis. So as you can see, the PIPC announced that the, the result of its investigation and imposed a fine of 1 million K Korean won, it's around like 750 USD. Uh, the reason of they got fined is it's just only they didn't notice they didn't let people know about that they didn't find because they you they export they gave it gave the data to other companies uh, then let's find out what is the PIPC is the PIPC is like 
that the the Personal Information Protection Commission, I think you can read it by yourself, but like GDPR or other laws, South Korea also have data pro protection law and there's a commission for that. This is that commission. Basically, they are the commission of government for protecting national personal information. But when you go to their website and when you see their master plan or PIPC, there's something weird thing in the, their master plan. Uh, as you can see, there's some safe use of personal information while including its value and other things. And let's read more. And uh, uh, if you find some, uh, they claim that they want to create a safe environment for personal information through the technology development and uh, Basically, they are promoting the uses of the personal information, not about the protecting the information. So I'm not saying the, the, this commission only doing just promoting uses of this personal information, but this commission should be focused on the protecting citizens' data, but they are even on their, even their website, they are promoting uses of personal information. And uh, then I think they should change the name to like Personal Information Commission or Personal Information Uses Commission, but actually it's uh, happening. So the chairperson of this commission asked the president that they want to, to, they want to change, they want to remove the protection in their name. So the president agreed it's a great idea. So now you can see the what is the what the South Korean privacy policy is like. I wonder if you have heard about this. South Korea has the second highest number of the security cameras. The first is China. So when you go to so South Korea and Korea, you can see this kind of security cameras or CCTVs all around the city. Some are for the like traffics, but this kind of thing is for the safeties. Some might say all of these CCTVs are privacy problem, but I think the biggest problem is golf thing. It's the go-to solution. So if there's some crime happens in some area, they just install more CCTVs or c security cameras. They are not just recording, they are also surveillance, all of them lively, but because they don't have enough people and uh, they have so many security cameras, so there are some needs of AI technologies. So like you see in this picture, they can know, they now South Korean government use AI technology to the security cameras, so government can know what people are doing using, by using AI. And uh, government claims that they, are, they can prevent crimes, but there's no relation between it prevent crimes. Uh, government, is pre government is planning to make all of security cameras into AI security camera until 2027. And the ETRI, the government research institution, is developing the technolo a technology to predict, not prevent, the crimes. Plus, during the COVID-19 era, there was, some, there was a, a city next to Seoul called Bucheon. They used AI surveillance camera to check all loot, where they go, who got COVID. But after the loiter, the famous journal find out it's happening, they stop, they, they stop doing it. And uh, I wonder you might heard about the, some, hap, some bad thing happened in South Korea two years ago. There was a crowd crash during the Halloween in Seoul, 2022. After that, South Korean government and Seoul decide to install more security cameras to 
check how many people are in the street on the, or the, in the some area instead of using old school way, the barricade or just police. You might think it's only for safety so it won't be affected to me. But AI technologies are not only used for surveillance. Uh, in some of institutions or companies owned by government require people to do the in AI interviews, even it should be used for reference only. There, was, there were some cases who couldn't have in-person interview because they didn't able to do AI interview because of technical issues. And if they denied to have the in-person interview, they can't know why they are denied. And uh, furthermore, these technologies are not only used by government. There are also lots of private companies and the uh, university used for entrance exams. This kind of AI is used for the reducing budget, but and also there are a faith in South Korea, South Korean society that AI is much fairer than person. I heard the news that Taiwanese government also tried to make a digital ID, but now it's paused. <laughs> but not like Taiwan, not like Taiwan, South Korea, you can use digital driver's license card today. Uh, and they are trying to also implement into the actual ID card, including your fingerprint, because we are, they all have our 10 fingerprints. Uh, I think this or cases has some same problem. It's not disclosed by and just developed by themselves it's the, it's decided by themselves the government but not the peop not by the people i hope my talk was a a good presentation of what's happening in south korea and thank you Oh, thank you, Mr. Moon, for his um, information. Very valuable from um, South Korea's experience. So um, for our fellow um, audience, um, you can use your microphone in front of you, and you can just bring it up and push the um, circle button in front of you. And after it um, blink red light, you are good to go with the microphone. So uh, because I didn't see Okay, so there's one of a question. So if you are willing to like have your comments or some of the question with our speakers right here, you can just raise your hand and like um, starting the question or maybe you can just use the Slido on the screen to raise your question. So um, uh, Moon, uh, the first, first question for you is the, um, how's the um, citizen societies from um, the South Korea react to the things you just shared with us? Basically, lots of people doesn't care about that. And uh, not like Taiwan, South Korea has very few civic society organizations. So uh, basically, only few people like 10 or something says about that and uh, but I have some hope that if I tell about these two people that my friend or other people, people quite agree about that, like it has some problems. Okay, um, I believe you can receive our second question mm -hmm. from our audience. Uh, what do you think Korean government could do for the low? 
Uh, basically, I think that when they decide of some kind of thing, they don't bring some expert and um, even the some kind of civic expert from civic society organizations are not actually experts sometimes. So I think there's need a lot of, when they decide something, they need some experts and um, a lot of people's voice. Okay, so um, is there any follow-up question for this one from our audience? Okay, our audience um, seems um, prefer to use things like though instead of like raising their hands. Okay, so um, for the next one, the um, the question is: um, Do you worry about like um, this kind of um, personal data manipulation or usage will like make the Korea society more um, to become more and more like the Chinese. China? Yes. Uh, I didn't mention one thing that when they gave the airport data, the facial data to, to the private company, they do that because China is do that very well. So I used, I think South Korean people are believe government pretty well and uh, if government do it, they just follow it. So I'm a bit worried about that, but people, if something happens, people always protest something. So I think it will be fine eventually. Okay, so maybe you can start with our highest vote. Um, you can vote the question you like to ask if others uh, are already uh. um, put them up. So you can like um, push the like button <laughs> on our the Slido website. Okay, it's so like the next one. Answer the second one. The the first one. And like uh, I forgot. I just forgot the name. The District Ministry of Taiwan. The I forgot her her name. The yeah, 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 Audrey. Not like Taiwan, South Korea has like no figures, and the um, uh, and the most of politician who involved in this kind of thing is our lawyers. So I think they think in different way, but I think there's no one. Yeah. Okay, a um, uh, little bit sad answers. Yeah. Okay, so let's move to the next question. Um, could you explain briefly whether South Korea's person, oh, uh, it disappeared. Please make it, yeah, please retrieve <laughs> the question. Okay. Uh, let's answer the second one. Okay, there. cool. Uh, someone is like, uh, uh, could you like yeah. um, translate that for us? Because I'm not, um, yeah. understand the Korean the things. A AI interviews can be have some like bias on purpose. Is it possible to find out? Yeah. Yeah. Is it possible to find out it's happening or not? Like, um, If there's no lots of data, it would be really hard, but only thing we can expect is with blowing or if the the AI interviews is by the private company, actually people can choose not to be go there, but if it's by the government or government institutions, I think law can prevent people, like prevent the AI interviews or make them uh, open their algorithms. Okay, cool. 
So the next one is, can you also speak about the government's request of data from private companies? Is that a common case? Examples, uh, what regulation are in place? Uh, after 2020, there was some law. The, the law was passed. It's called Data 3 Law something, if I translate. Uh, basically, so the private companies can sell or move, to, move personal data, personal information to another country or another sell to the another companies. So, and the, when you go to, there's a data, open data center website in South Korea, so you can get a lot of data. But I think that someone might think, I don't want to give all of my data, including like everything. Like, but for the public goodwill, I think some of data that cannot be used for identifying us can be used for even for the private companies because some may think like if it's by the private company, it's bad. And if it's by the government, it's good. But in the in South Korean law and as far as I know, GDPR allows the the scientific purpose when they want to move the personal information personal informations. Uh, how can we say the the scientific purpose is is it like if private company do the same thing? It's not, uh, it's not scientific purpose, and uh, if the government do it, it's a scientific purpose. I don't think so. So, yeah. So, if I answer again, the, it's, I think it's getting common and common. Okay, got it. Okay, so the, um, the next question is, um, could you explain brief, briefly whether South Korea's Personal Data Protection Act allows massive optical surveillance in public places? They actually have some regulations that if they want to surveillance, uh, insert some surveillance camera, they have to have some purpose, they cannot use it for another purpose, but the law is quite, it's not clear that much. So some local government want to use it for like, they use a, the security camera to find out the someone park in the, they shouldn't park and that they try to find them, but the PIPC said, uh, told them it's illegal. So it's, it's basically it's not allowed, but some, there are some, a lot of gray area. So that's why they do that. And then for the private companies, uh, because they can use public place data. So, uh, I think I can skip the private companies thing, okay. Okay, so this one, um, okay. So before we move to the next question on the Slido, if there won't be anyone um, put up more and more questions, yeah. Um, people right here is allowed to like raising your hands and by speaking, like, yeah, I, I, I think. I, I just want to announce that like, people are allowed it to like raise your hand and just um, ask question with your microphone. But okay, so maybe we can just finish the um, the one on the Slido and we can move to our okay. audience. Okay, so the next one, um, will you think that will be closer to Chinese civic censorship because um, this, this one is a little bit alike with the question earlier, but I think in my opinion, the surveillance and the censorship might be a little bit different. So I want to 
like hear from your like thoughts? Mm. At least in the public area, not in the digital area, South Korean government isn't that much trying to do censorships. Like if you do the like protest in front of security cameras, you there's very you. I don't think you will be arrested or something. But in the digital place. There's a lot of censorship in the like, yeah. Okay, okay. Before we move to the data bridge one, and I personally really want to ask, we can open the floor first with our audience. So maybe I see someone who raised your hands. You can just speak up. Hello. I'd like to know if. Anybody in Korea has ever take, taken legal action, like t take a lawsuit to the government to, to, uh, for this kind of violation? Uh, because in Taiwan, if, if like local or central government uh, do the wrong thing, you can take an administration lawsuit. So is it possible or is it effective to use these major measures to prevent the the government's violation? Uh, I didn't mention it at the time the when civic society organization find out the data in, they gave it to the private they gave the data to the private companies. They also made a lawsuit to the government. So it's quite happened many times. And the, the result is always comes out late. So it's sometimes the result is disappointing, but sometimes the result is pretty convincing. So it happens, but if this kind of ha thing happens, people, a lot of people do the lawsuit or do that, yeah. Okay, so um, before, okay, so before we move on to the, uh, the final question, I have to um, brought up some of the Taiwanese context because um, in two years ago, the Taiwanese government, um, um, someone thought, some, some of the people thought they um, leak a lot of like, um, Taiwanese citizens' personal data, like we call it household registration data, and it almost include uh, every single citizen from Taiwan, and lots of data like um, where they live, um, um, their marriage status, or even the educational level. So recently, there are some of the people in the Gulf Zero community are filing the case against the um, Taiwanese government about this one. So. Um, I personally also want to ask about this one. So, uh, is there any f um, kind of like massive or major data breach incident happened in Korea, and how would the government or some of the um, regulation will like treat to this kind of incident? Uh, there was a news about that today, and uh, about it always happens. The data breach it always happened by the government and the private companies and the. Today there was a news about data breach by the government about 1,400 people's data is leaked and um, and it, it's pretty low number than our common cases so sometimes the data is leaked like 1 million data leaked so when it happens the PISPC always do the regulations, but um, sometimes when they do like, if they encrypted the data or they did something by following the law, they find only like 2K USD or 3K USD, but sometimes for like Facebooks, they find like 1 million Korean one. So they use it f 
for I'm not saying it's for like they use it to do the, some political things to like less fine to the find less to the Korean companies and find a lot to the foreign companies, but it always happens and research is always disappointing. A little bit disappointed, like conclusion. But um, before we go, uh, I want to like have you a uh, um, final question because um, recently the Taiwanese uh, we still have uh, haven't have our um, personal information protection committee. We are still like building it in our legislation process. So um, do you have any kinds of like um, the. Um, recommendation or suggestion to our latest PIPC, like it might be um, being built in the future. Is there like two or three recommendation to us? Like what what can it do to um, being better or um, like to prevent the issues right now happened in South Korea? I it can be brief. The always the government's always should decide after they investigate a lot of things but not for the if not just for the convenience for themselves or people So thank you again for the moon for the per, um, fabulous um, information and his um, um, experience from South Korea let's give him a round of applause.